Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing great. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, in this video, I'll be going through zero trust solutions for enterprises uh, using Zscaler. Uh, basically, we we know that you know zero trust security has been the buzzword for a lot of companies, uh, and especially in the cybersecurity conferences, the two things what you will hear mostly uh, uh, from all the boots is one is the the use of ai machine learning uh, and second the uh, the zero trust security solutions you know uh, so i thought maybe it's a good time for me to explain all this and using uh, a problem statement from an enterprise uh, and 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 giving a solution using zscaler which is the most popular uh, you know saas slash zero trust security solutions in the market right now okay so let's start. Okay, the problem statement. Uh, I'll be touching on four main topics. Uh, problem statement: What problem we are solving? Uh, what is the solution looks like in terms of architecture? And then I'll be going through different design considerations that in order for you to build this solution, this is what you need to consider. Uh, lastly, I will be going through my approach. What I will take if I need to architect this solution. Okay, let's start. Okay, so if you think about a traditional uh, enterprise setup where they have branch office, let me use this pointer. If they have branch office uh, or if the users are mobile, uh, they use internet and their mobile device or the Wi-Fi to connect to the enterprise network. Uh, and we have different teams available, like the dev teams who want to, who either sits on-prem or, or, or work remotely and they want to access the environment so these are the main three users okay now traditionally what happens you go through the network the on-prem network using a vpn client or a vp or a side-to-side -side vpn tunnel if you're using a vpn client you end up going to that vpn gateway uh, use on the internet and from that vpn gateway you will be ending up connecting to the on-prem router or a switch which will take you to, to that application, right? Uh, so this all is a part of an MPLS cloud in which you traditionally rely on just one vendor or two vendors, you know, in some cases, but usually on one vendor. And that would be setting up this MPLS network for you. Now, in the second way, like for example, as a backup for that MPLS connection, there would be a lease line setup. Uh, or if you are not, or, or if you are a little bit advanced in your in your networking, you would be using an SD WAN SD WAN setup, which is software defined networking uh, for the very uh, for for the wide area networking, in which you will be setting up different overlays, uh, breaking the whole architecture into three main planes: the management plane, which is for the operations, then the control plane, which will uh, give you the direction for the for the quickest path and then we have the forwarding plane where the actual traffic goes so you can use either the sd van uh, or the mpls the difference between both of these are if you're using an mpls you have to then uh, use the traditional like the routing you know methodology to go towards your data center uh, whereas if you use sd van you can have much faster path to your application and you can have more better security rather than just using uh, corporate data center security, which are mainly relying on their firewalls to protect them, and some authentication authorization principles, you know, using you know the cloud Active Directory platforms. But with SD WAN, you can you know expedite or or have better security, and if you are have you know good licensing and if you have done good segmentation of your network. Now, the problem we are solving here is you want to solve here is three main problems. One is the security controls. We, are, we don't want to rely on the perimeter security, nor we want to rely on the SD-WAN security, what we can get, okay? The second problem is that the local breakout, what we need to get, uh, if we, let's say, are uh, using SD-WAN, you know, we don't have to rely on third-party integrations like cloud access security broker, CASP, you know, we have to have a local breakout, which will give, which will give us the zero trust security model uh, that we want to do. Okay, then we don't have to have any operational inefficiency, meaning that there is no latency uh, or, or or performance issues that we can have for our applications. Okay, so these are the three uh, problem statement we want to solve. Now, how do you solve it? 
this is how you can solve it okay to explain this just i'll just briefly go on uh, explain you the architecture then we will discuss each use cases one by one okay similarly we are having three set of users the branch office which you want to connect to we have the mobile users and then we have different teams which want to connect to either the complete data center or towards the uh, cloud platforms you know okay so what will happen is the the users would be connected to their edge devices from the uh, using the SD WAN, you know, so there will be an SD WAN edge router which will, will the user will be connected to from their endpoints. Okay, from those edge routers, there will be a tunnel that would be established towards a Zscaler data center or any Zscaler point of presence. From there, the point of presence will take it to their Zscaler data center. Okay, for different types of traffic, for example, one traffic which is for the internet, there is one component called zia which is zscaler internet access the users who want to connect to the internet will be using the zia to go towards different cloud platforms here azure or aws um sas platforms or or internet so any inspection filtering uh monitoring everything that that happens is happening on the zia platform now in the other use case, there's th these users who want to access their data centers. In that case, the product that we'll be using is the Zscaler private access to get to the corporate data center to access the applications. Or you, if you want to also use, uh, uh, if you have hosted your application on the cloud, then you can also use ZPA to get yourself towards the cloud platform, okay, where your applications are hosted. Uh, 5G is a good use case where you use hybrid cloud. Uh, you have some parts of your application on the private cloud and then some parts is there on the public cloud. Okay. Uh, then there is ZDX also, which is giving you the digital experience monitoring. If you are using different apps, you are using streaming services, so you can have better view of what the utilization is, what security posture is there for your different use cases. Okay. Now, this is the architecture, what it looks like. but how this all will work what are the different components that we have to involve uh, what we have to install where we have to install what are the different things okay let's talk about this on the branch on the user side which is this side uh, you have to install the client connectors client connectors nothing but an software which you will be installing it okay um, which will set you which will give you or identify that what are the different ip addresses you are going to you know, if it's FQD and IP address, whatever, uh, they can have it, it can discover, you know, where you are going and it can whitelist, for example, here the user is wants to only access these IPs, you know, or these application segments, uh, or you can do it manually. Then once you, once you configure this, it will be loaded on your profile. Okay. Then uh, the other thing, what will happen is that there will be a tunnel that will established from your edge device. To the zscaler data center which will be either a gre tunnel or a ip tunnel depends upon how how what are your requirements for example if you are have high throughput requirement you will be going with gre versus ip if you want more security but less throughput then the actual brain of of the solution for example the control plane of the network is the central authority part here okay which is right here at the left hand side and it is having essentially the pack files, which is the proxy files, which will which have the rules written, for example, that, hey, this user wants to access to this application, whereas all other traffic needs to be blocked. So like think about as a firewall, as a service policies, uh, which will allow you to take actions, for example, what, what you need to do for this source IPs, right? Okay, so this is just a brief overview about, about this architecture. Now, the if you want to access from the Zen, from the Zscaler exchange, you want to access your data center, there will be a tunnel that will established uh, from the ZPA platform uh, towards your uh, ZPA service edge, uh, which will be in the DMZ. And uh, uh, then you have to install an application client connector on your uh, data center as well uh, to connect to that uh, from your data center traffic uh, towards the Zen platform. Okay, uh, this is 
what it looks like. But from the user experience, you don't have to, if you if you are thinking from this from the user perspective that hey, there is one tunnel here, then there is one tunnel here. So maybe I'll be facing like performance issues. No, because the actual traffic will be traveling in the micro tunnel. Okay, this is how how Zscaler offers you good customer experience. Yeah. Uh, okay. In the terms of the use cases, there are mainly five use cases which I want to cover. Uh, if you want to enforce data production, for example, no private information should be taken out from a company, or the user is not putting the confidential documents of the company on a Google Drive, for example. Let's say. So you there are different services which are available. You can use the security broker for uh, those metadata scannings what you are doing then you can also use isolated browsing for the dlp meaning that uh, uh, your whatever sites you are accessing you will be uh, using an isolated a proxy server uh, as a as a proxy to go to that a website for example and and the reason is that if there is a malicious payload coming back towards your endpoint that would be restricted to that proxy not it will go to your uh, endpoint. Okay, so this is something which you can get. Uh, you will be having TLS SSL in inspection. Everything if you are using T TLS HTTPS, you usually don't don't you know inspect what is going inside. But since it is using Zia uh, like Zscaler certificate, so that that decryption would happen, and then it will be also inspected as well. Um, we have private application access. You can have different application access. Okay. Now in terms of the uh, Zero trust security. Zero trust. If you if you understand the zero trust model, basically you'll have to know three main things. One is uh, you have to have least privileged for the user in terms of what he can access. We so can just do only what he supposed to do. Okay, that's one of the things. The second thing we are not uh, giving any access or explicit access to anyone. You know, the access is only be granted if certain conditions are met. This is the second principle. The third principle is uh, you are assuming breach, meaning that everything like the breach has already happened. And now the attacker has to go to different places. So you have to prevent the lateral movement. OK, this is the main three principles of zero trust security. OK, so how you will get this? You have to do two main things. One is you have to have a PDP, a policy determination point, which will uh, based on the activity, based on the user details, based on the different, uh, you know, your your data they will check that what you need to do what policy needs to be enforced okay this is a pdp point then the pp point which is the actual enforcement point where the actual implementation happens on the control this is the pep point so you can see in this architecture you can have the ca as the pdb whereas the uh, zia the zdx the zpa where the actual enforcements are happening it will be either here or on the data center where you are actually implementing those things so this is how you can architect this solution I hope that you have understand uh, what the zero trust security is and how you can uh, you know architect using Zscaler. Uh, now, in terms of design considerations, mainly six main principles. I would say, firstly, evaluate the use case carefully. Why do you need SASE if you are using SD WAN, for example? If SD WAN is working fine for you and they are giving you the zero trust, uh, following the zero trust principles, everything looks good to you. Then why do you need uh, SASE? Okay, so this is something which you need to think internally. Or if you are going towards the zero trust journey, think about the maturity level first and then scale it uh, accordingly. Uh, check the source traffic handling, mainly some of the applications in the endpoint, for example, like Cloudflare, uh, they are restrict, they are they have wild listed to what source can reach them. You know, so in that case, you have to do the changes in the routing so that the IPs are not getting blocked. Uh, then there are bandwidth requirements over tunnels. So go through the documentation of Zscaler, what, what they support, what they don't support, what is your uh, support on this. OK, I want to emphasize here in this slide, this bullet point, which is the opportunity for telcos. Now we have seen the implementation of Palo Alto uh, with at and you know, uh, using the zero trust for the zero trust uh, you know, implementation. But the telco part where the actual control plane, the signaling part runs or happens, the G node Bs, the, the AMFs, the NRFs, all those applications, okay, uh, which are checking the user activity, okay, uh, and the user plane where the actual data is going, okay. So how do you enforce zero trust 
on those two planes okay can we redirect the traffic from nw daf from let's say from nrf to nw daf and from nw daf towards the z scalar data center uh, can we do something for the user plane traffic if the z scalar scan products or any zero trust security products can understand the the telco protocols okay so these are some some questions that needs to be answered uh, there is like, like i mean good research work going on in different working in the committees in 3gbp there are different like studies going on but nothing is 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 practical right now but there is a good opportunity for companies like zscaler palo alto as well as telco vendors to to work collaboratively and come up with some solution on this uh lastly zero trust security is dynamic policy driven not the static so whatever you are configuring it should be revised it should be changing based on the data inputs you are getting from different sources so make sure that you are having such policy centric mindset okay uh, how do you want to architect the solution once you understand the architecture start about start with requirement gathering first understand sit with your customer what they want to do you know what are their pain points what is their zero trust interpretation you know what is their budget you know so based on that consolidated view uh, go to the next phase which is first of all checking what is the assessment looks like for the current architecture what are the internal external threats you want to protect against the best way to do this is to use threat model okay uh, and as you do the threat modeling align the attack vectors and the solutions to those to those problems with the zta principle that whether we are uh, secure for the assume breach if whether we can control lateral movement uh, whether we can authenticating the user every type of user is authenticated there is an explicit trust you know so check about your requirements when you go to the technical requirements stage where actually you build the solution okay then take it to the design phase build the hld from the technical requirements go towards lld defining you know ip parameters configuration files everything and then uh, uh, do a small integration and just validate that what what you have architected and how you have designed the solution is is fulfilling your business requirements as well so this is an important important consideration you know the performance every aspect is met or not uh, then uh, go to the mvp production stage uh, where you have to actually do the uh, do, do the traffic cutover so make sure you do an iterative approach to to uh, in building the solution uh so that's it uh, from my side uh, i hope you have enjoyed this video uh, if you think this is informative uh please do share with your friends uh give me a thumbs up if you if you like what has been presented and please subscribe my channel for more insights okay thank you very much